going to be my video blog of my basement remodeling project. I'm going to be posting some short videos just showing the various steps that I have uh, gone through as I go through the project, uh, both for my own uh, personal record, but also maybe some people out there might find this useful. Uh, I spent a lot of time and energy doing research uh, online and, and through other resources to try to figure out uh, really what kinds of materials and systems and, and so on that I wanted to use to make this the uh, uh, the most uh, you know warm, dry, uh, you know long-term remodel uh, that I could for a basement. Uh, this is my home. Uh, we are uh, in the northeast, actually in the western New York area. Uh, we can see some, some pretty tough winters. Um, anything from lots of snow and moisture to uh, some periods of, of pretty deep cold um, and then uh, lots of changes in freeze thaw cycles so um, uh, we can see a lot of moisture in the area, we can see a lot of cold in the area um, we also get uh, reasonably warm uh, summers as well. The uh, construction of our foundation here is a, a poured concrete uh, foundation uh, the builder when the house was built use this uh, drop insulation um, all the way around uh, the basement. Uh, stopped about a foot, foot and a half off the ground. Um, within the first few years, the home is currently uh, uh, just about 10 years old, and uh, within the first few years we did see some uh, settling and, and some small uh, you know, cracks in the foundation just from natural house settling. Uh, a little bit of moisture that would come through those from time to time. I did have those cracks treated uh, by a professional uh, to make sure that those were um, uh, essentially uh, cleaned out and tied into the drain tile and then sealed back up. Uh, so I did all that before I started the project. Um, as I got into the project I removed all of the, uh, the drop insulation, uh, threw that away. I used uh, hydraulic cement and went through in any other just small surface cracks or any of the points where you had uh, the pins coming through the foundation for the foundation supports. Um, any of those pin points I also uh, made sure I opened them up a little bit Build them with hydraulic cement to make sure we wouldn't get moisture leaking through them from the pieces of steel that would continue to corrode over time and have potentially have moisture coming through those points. So we sealed all of those up, got the foundation all ready to go, uh, did caulk uh, all of the seams in the foundation. As you can see down here, used a, uh, uh, a flexible uh, cement caulk through all of these seams so that uh, all the seams are now uh, uh, nice and sealed up. Uh, before we got going on the project and the same thing all the way around the perimeter. Uh, so for the uh, insulation that I'm using on the basement, I'm using an Owens Corning Fomilar uh, product. This is an extruded polystyrene or XPS. Uh, the XPS product is uh, uh, resistant to uh, moisture and is also a damp proofing product. Uh, we adhered this to the walls uh, using a uh, foam adhesive, something that's not going to be aggressive and eat at the foam or uh, cause it to deteriorate over time. So the uh, foam adhesive that I used for this was the uh, uh, Loctite PL300 foam board adhesive. Uh, it, it worked pretty well. Um, frankly, the, the foam was on the uh, concrete pretty good. And I didn't use, need to use a lot. I only used uh, a few small dabs uh, in corners uh, in the center as I put it onto the wall. Uh, and it's all stayed fairly well. Um, they do tell you to use uh, more of like a, a, a cross or a Z uh, pattern for using this to get a, a reasonable amount of adhesion. Um, I'm going to be building my walls right in front of this also. And I've also used um, house wrap tape, in this case I've used Tyvek brand, uh, to seal all of the joints. And so the combination of the adhesive, the tape, and the walls in front, I'm pretty confident this is uh, not going to have any problems with this staying in place uh, over the life of the home. So the foam board that I used was the uh, Owens, Corning form, Owens Corning formula again. Uh, I used the uh, 250 uh, rated board. That's 25 pounds per square inch. Uh, a little bit heavier than I, I probably needed to use on the walls, uh, but it was the one most readily available at my uh, local supply store. I could have used the 150, which is 15 pounds per square inch on the walls, but uh, really not a, a tremendous price difference either way. Uh, in this case, I used the two inch thick, which gives you an R10 insulation value on the walls. Uh, I use the, uh, the tongue and groove style, so you can see the tongue on this side. The other side has a matching groove. So as you uh, put the uh, insulation boards together, you get a nice little fit in there. Um, in between uh, each of the joints, I used um, a uh, spray foam to uh, give it additional sealant in between the joints. Uh, if, you, uh, if you would zoom in over here real quick, you can kind of see in between, uh, just behind the tape, if you can make that out, you can see a little bit of the foam that had come through 
uh, the joints as I did that. So use spray foam in between to make sure the joints were also then sealed and then use the uh, house wrap. In this case, I use Tyvek brand tape over the top to give a nice uh, uh, vapor barrier uh, sealant uh, for all of those joints. Um, same thing I did up along all the rim joists. Uh, if you walk over this, we actually have a, uh, an extension in the house that goes over this way. So I insulated all the way across that and along the back walls and along the side walls. And if you notice over here, I'll use my flashlight. Uh, also insulated the, uh, the rim joists uh, with the uh, Formular, uh, again, spray foam to seal around all the rim joists, seal around any of the uh, piping penetrations and that that we had. And then again, use the uh, house wrap tape uh, to seal up all of the uh, uh, connections and any of the joints of the foam. And uh, it's tough to see, but there's also a layer of foam here across the rim. So basically this entire, all of the concrete now is uh, fully wrapped and sealed in the foam. Uh, what happens is, uh, is, is concrete is, is always permeable to water and uh, is, always has some kind of moisture content in it. Uh, you can get moisture, or you will get moisture uh, wicking through the concrete and uh, uh, potentially soaking into any of your building materials. Uh, what this does uh, by wrapping the concrete in the foam and, um, and sealing it off, it ensures that you're not going to get uh, moisture working through the foam uh, into now my studs, uh, drywall, insulation, or anything else that I might use as building materials. Um, for drying purposes for the concrete, some people had questioned that uh, uh, how will the concrete dry if it does absorb you know, an excessive amount of moisture. Uh, there is still about a foot to foot and a half of concrete exposed up above grade on the outside of the home. So the concrete is still exposed to air and so there is a, uh, a conduit there uh, through the exposure to outside air for the concrete to dry to the outside. So once I got all the uh, wall insulation done and all the uh, uh, damp proofing done and uh, vapor sealing, um, then I uh, started working on the floor. Uh, for the floor, um, I researched a variety of different products to create both a, a moisture and a thermal break uh, between the concrete floor and uh, the, uh, ultimately the subfloor that I'm going to be putting in. Uh, I wanted both a, a thermal and a vapor barrier break. Um, also wanted some insulating value on the floor uh, so that uh, when my family and kids and other people are down here, um, you know, we have those cold winters, you're not going to be uh, uh, losing, we're going to try to minimize some of the heat that we're losing uh, through the floor particularly. Um, the product I, I found that I liked the best, and I called the company and spoken to them, there's a number of different kinds of, I'll say, dimple mat type products that are out there uh, that will allow uh, both for a thermal and a, uh, a vapor uh, break. Uh, this dimple mat product uh, I bought from a company called Super Seal. Um, you can find them online. Uh, I could put a link down at the bottom of this video also if you're interested. Um, it's a really, what I like about it is a really thin membrane. It's only about an eighth of an inch thick. You know? So this is the uh, pieces of the super sealed dimple mat. And if you, I don't know if you can see the thickness there, it's really only about a, an eighth of an inch thick overall. So uh, it gives you a very nice low profile, especially when using it on the floor. You're not gonna lose a whole lot of headroom uh, in, in building it up, especially when I wanna add some insulating and a subfloor to this uh, on top of it. Uh, the, the dimple mat, I'm going to basically overlap like this, uh, each of my seams. I'm using a, a silicone, it's a GE2 silicone caulk. Uh, in between to just give myself a little bit of sealant in between those. Uh, they fit together pretty nicely like that. And then I'm using a, uh, a Gorilla brand adhesive tape to uh, tape the seams just so that during the rest of the construction and stuff, it's gonna hold these dimple mats in place on the floor while I'm adding the, uh, the next level of insulation and uh, ultimately the subfloor to the top of it. Um, what I've done here is I've tucked the dimple mat just about an inch underneath the foam. Now, in hindsight, I probably should have put the dimple mat down first and then laid the foam board along the walls uh, up above it. it. Would have been a little bit easier. Um, this way, in doing the foam board first, I had to make sure I had enough clearance underneath and I had to do a little bit of cleanup work down around the bottom to get the dimple mat to fit under there nicely. So again, I'm overlaying the, uh, I'm overlapping the foam board by about an inch. So I got a sample of the, uh, the foam board again, and if you imagine this up against the foundation wall, uh, and I have the dimple mat uh, slid under just about an inch or so, roughly like that. Um, in the future, any moisture that I, I could or, or likely will get, uh, you know, from the foundation, uh, either through development of additional smaller cracks or that, it will run behind the foam board, down along the wall, and ultimately underneath this dimple mat. Now, the nice idea about the dimple mat is, 
uh, you do have spaces under there to allow any small amounts of moisture to work its way along the ground and ultimately to the sump pump uh, that's going to be in this corner and I'm going to close this in, in a small utility room. Uh, so the moisture will actually stay under the floor at all times and because you have space under there under the nipple mat, uh, there's still air underneath there and allow it to dry as well. So uh, by overlaying it this way, I'm going to uh, seal along the seam here. It'll keep any kind of moisture underneath, you know, behind the foam, underneath the dimple mat. That's the idea behind uh, this design. That's what you can see I'm doing over here. Uh, here you see the, uh, the Gorilla Tape that I'm using. After I use a small bead of silicone caulk in between, then I use the Gorilla Tape to hold it all together until I ultimately get the construction done. So what I did here was I actually uh, temporarily supported this landing and the stairs. Uh, removed all of this support structure and rebuilt this because I wanted to get this broken away from direct contact with the concrete. Um, some of the wood that I had taken away uh, when I did this, if you notice over here, um, this was one of the pieces of wood right here. It was in contact directly on the ground, on the concrete, and there was a number of those. And you can see how much moisture just in, in less than 10 years it already started soaking up and wicking through the wood. If you see those two nail holes there, you can actually see quite a bit of the nail corrosion um, Actually, those nails were pretty well uh, rusted and corroded already. If you compare the two pieces, you can see just over a number of years how much moisture just by this wood being in contact with the concrete can absorb. And um, we never had any water on the floor in the basements. There was never any issue of this wood actually being exposed direct to water on the floor. That's just a matter of the wood being in direct contact with the concrete. So when I ultimately build walls around the staircases, I'm going to turn this area into a closet and some storage. Uh, I wanted to make sure that the support structure I broke from the concrete. So when I ultimately build some walls around this, uh, put some drywall on, I'm not going to have a direct conduit for moisture from the ground to the concrete up through into my walls, and potentially create a potential for mold and mildew and that kind of thing. Uh, so in building this, I took some small pieces of the dimple mat, uh, built a support structure on top of the dimple mat. Um, I, I used a fair amount of force to make sure that it was, uh, you know, it, it, the dimple mat's actually crushed a little bit to the ground to make sure I don't have any kind of springy effect from that small little one-eighth of dimple. Uh, you can actually see over there a little bit how, how well crushed that is into the ground, but it's still going to give me that moisture and, uh, and uh, vapor break on the ground. Same thing over here on the staircase. I removed any of the other walls and support structure. I actually uh, just temporarily lifted up the staircase a little bit so I could bring the dimple mat all the way underneath the staircase. And now this staircase is, uh, it has a vapor break from the uh, contact with the concrete. So that's where I am at this point in the project. I'll be putting another video online uh, after I get through uh, some significant uh, completion of next phases. Uh, next phases will be finishing the dimple mat, uh, sealing and taping all of those joints. I'm then going to be adding a uh, one inch thick piece of uh, Formular uh, e yeah, XPS. This is going to give me an R5 insulating value on the floor. Uh, that will go down on top of the dimple mat and then I'll be putting my subfloor on top of that. I'll come back with the product I'm using on my subfloor next time. Uh, like I said, I don't have any concerns uh, because of the uh, 25 pound rated uh, capacity on this of being able to support the loads from anything that will be on top of the subfloor here. One final thought when insulating uh, you know, your walls and creating your damp proofing, you know, I have a lot of the waste piping and things running along my foundation walls here, either from strapping along a joist or strapping hanging from the foundation itself. Uh, you want to make sure that you've sealed all this in real well. I've used the uh, uh, spray foam for all of that as well. The point being that you really, uh, to get the right kind of damp proofing, you don't want the ambient air that has moisture in it during the winter, summer, and so on contacting cold wall, condensing and running down, and then soaking into your building materials. Thank you very much. Talk to you next time.